Hello there everyone, I'm Man64 doing a pilot episode for a series that I, as of yet, have no name for. But, hopefully, I will figure out some sort of name soon to name this type of video. As is a pilot, I will not be going into too much detail throughout this video, but hopefully leave you wanting more. So, what is this you may be asking? Well, to put it simply, me giving you a rundown of what I've been studying in my design game design course so far. Now, it will not be covering everything in a large amount of time, and in no way near enough detail to help you make a game. But, with a bit of research, reference, a lot of work, this may help you develop a game, or at least give a bit of light, or at least a food for thought, on how you'll see games in the future. Remember, this is not 100% and it's just, you know, to keep you thinking, keep you on your toes when gaming or making games. The video in the background will hopefully convey some of the subject matter in today's video. Also, take it as a mature standing that there are games on here for a mature audience of graphic nature gaming question being outlast and also some people may laugh because there's visual novels in this visual novels are still game because they're an interactive medium with choice debate all you want for now I'm gonna call visual novels a game much like the Telltale series I'm probably gonna be talked about quite severely later on anyway let us begin so, this episode is going to be based off the few lessons that I've had uh, about 10 weeks worth now. And I've been seeing this crop up in a lot of lessons and it's been helping me more and more build an understanding of what games need or lack. That being, emotion or emotional responses. So, throughout the lessons I've been basically learning about emotions in video games and even board games and how the player is meant to feel and if they don't feel engaged how can they feel they can't so they have to be feeling something whether that's simple things or more core feelings so originally uh, I sort of knew this you know Everyone sort of knows that games can draw out emotions, you know, that's a reasonable response. They are an interactive medium after all. But, I only thought they could convey core emotions, such as happiness, sadness, anger, and other, other various emotions like that. You know, just a- hit the mic. Just a raw response from the player. No, that's not true. The more I thought about this, a game can't convey just a single emotion without the player being attached. And it doesn't have to be a strong hitting emotion. For example, imagine a game where you are required to do nothing after a certain amount of time. Yes, I'm talking about idle games. The reason why I bring up idle games as an example is because it's a simple design, but it builds so much upon itself that a player will keep coming back for rewards and that gives a player an emotional response to keep coming back and I, it's just an idea to toy around with and I won't dive too deep into this but rewarding is a way to gain some sort of emotion how you reward them and how the game plays so in a ways having a positive feedback loop can be tremendous for the player and make them want to come back constantly. But how do you get that feeling into a game? Through value? How do you make something digital value or valuable? Some food for thought. You can dive deeper into that as you wish. So, where was I? Forgive me, I'm sort of looking at the script. So, from what I've managed to also tweak so far down into, is ways of, I've almost categorized ways of 
getting emotions from players. And these aren't strict ways of doing it, these aren't 100% ways of doing it, but these are ways that have been done. There are probably hundreds more, and I cannot list them all, because I only have 15 minutes on YouTube for this one. So, what are they? Brief In brief descriptions, emotional narrative responses, mechanical narrative, um, emotional mechanics responses and emotional dynamic responses the wording probably needs to be worked on but in a way that's sort of how I will categorize them for this so emotional narrative responses can come down to story or cutscenes or choice or things like Teratose Walking Dead series to the moon by free bird games and games that don't even need words but can convey emotion through visual narrative much like witch by mike intel 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 from deviant art forgive me if i've pronounced the name wrong and even persona 3 portable or the original persona 3 whichever you like it shows good narrative and gives player responses through the story you get invested in the characters, you get emotional towards it, it makes you feel something. No matter what it is, it's a feeling. Then you have emotional mechanical responses. So, much like, don't take this personal, I'm not going to even finish the rest of that name. <laughs> but I've been showing it throughout this so far because that name is ridiculously long but its mechanic is normally what visual novel novels lack so it gives you a mechanic to see hidden information which normally would be a blind gamble of choice however because of this it slowly makes you ask the question is this morally right to privacy or what privacy is online and seeing messages between people and that's a mechanic and they question that later on. You slowly get enveloped into using this mechanic to figure out information. It gives you a trigger when a message pops up. It plays a little sound. It gives you a little number on the thing. And you just want to click it. But why? Because of motion. You want to find out what that is. Then there are games like Outlast that convey um, through mechanics that you can't fight, you ain't a fighter. So everyone wants to kill you mostly. They want to do that and you have no way of fighting. That's a way of a mechanic. You feel helpless. It's a response for emotion. Now I'm probably rambling at this point, but emotional responses are really strong in these games. And to keep rambling on for a bit more on this dynamic emotional responses these are almost like unwritten rules and I'm gonna try and jump into board games quickly or um, yeah I guess you categorize them under board games but games like resistance the night of the werewolf and even the grand poo bar so go go over the, the first two resistance and night of the werewolf have a key focus on being a social game with hidden information they make you talk to each other. Slowly you betray or create alliances or conflict with who to be with. The Grand Poobah has a dynamic in which you may even bribe or favour players just to get what you want. This conveys fear between players and even games like Town of Selim are doing great because emotional responses are where you fear the night and your responses to others are highly strong and you have to figure out the information but when you fear the night that's an emotion every game does it it doesn't have to be a really strong hard hitting um, emotion like what to the moon does which is a tearjerker ending hmm. forgive me I had to breathe for a second though <laughs> but 
they're still conveying emotion, whether it's Goat Simulator or Minecraft, to the moon, or even Bioshock Infinite, it's conveying an emotion to you all the time. And that emotion doesn't need to be fun, it doesn't need to be joy, just gaming isn't just a child's toy. It can be, but it's not the be all end all, it's an interactive medium which we can all enjoy. And that's what makes it a game, what makes it so fun. It's emotion really, it really in a way we haven't determined how to explain emotion, it's a critical thing within all of us and yet in human psychology. Like I say, you can dive deeper into this as far as you want, but this rabbit hole keeps going and going. And to be honest, it's much like some of these games. If you take a step back and look at them again, what are they conveying? How are they conveying it? Don't take it for face value, take it to what it means behind it. Or the references it makes, or the way it uses certain things, certain styles, even colors, characters, and different things like why certain things are positioned. It may be because they're following a rule or using the golden ratio, using a certain color scheme so that they convey um, some sort of feeling towards them. This is a thing that happens in a large majority of games and I think it's overlooked. To be honest, I overlooked it for quite some time, but now I'm slowly seeing why emotions are so powerful in games. And they don't even be, like I say, they don't even need to be strong hitters. They don't need to be like To The Moon. I will not spoil To The Moon, but you need to go and see it. That ending is something that made me physically cry. And when a game can do that, it makes you question what other games can do. Many of you have probably seen the um, World of Warcraft game, and I'm pretty sure some of you may have even got really rare loot drops. How did that make you feel when you find that item that's almost like a 1% chance of finding? When you see those stats, when you see the item you've got, and your eyes light up, and you suddenly say, Yes. Those thousands of fights with that one boss have just been made redundant because you have that item now. You have what you wanted for so long and that is so powerfully conveyed through emotion. Now I'm going to take a quick um, step back and say if you want to expand upon the topic today, I will direct you to The Art of Game Design, A Book of Lenses by Jesse Shell, Chapter 2. The designer creates an experience, Chapter 8. The game is made for a player, and Chapter 9. The experience is in the player's mind. Hopefully, these will help you, um, you know, get acquainted with a bit more detail, a bit more depth than what I can go into. And, or, you can look at Mark Blakelin, Blakeless, forgive my name pronunciation, it is poor. Tools for creating dynamic games, oh, no, sorry. Tools for creating dramatic game dynamics. This will talk about positive and negative feedback loops and give you some idea on how dynamics can affect a game. And hopefully it will give you the reason and the understanding of why in games of Monopoly you feel that joy when an enemy has landed on your square and it's decked with houses. And you sit there counting the numbers. That could just be me though. Ah, uh, dear. But, as I say, I only scratch the surface of this. If you like this type of video, please let me know, like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you have a name to suggest or a topic that you would like me to try and uncover or 
the value to you or anything like that, then I'm willing to do so. Now to quickly look at the screen, for myself at least anyway, this is which, I spoke about it earlier in the video, this is the kind of response that I mean. That's hopefully created some emotion for you. Hopefully it's not joy. I've been on 64. Thank you for listening.